All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, my name is Valerie Shkowski. Just about everyone calls me Val, and I'm from the Creative Destruction Lab, or CDL. And I'm really excited to be here today. Um, I'm a big advocate for gender diversity in STEM, um, having a PhD in chemistry, chemistry myself. So I'm really excited to be here, and I'm going to tell you all about Creative Destruction Lab and how we incubate and how we support um, quantum-based startups. And I'll just say that if anyone has any questions along the way, I'm trying to leave a couple minutes at the end. So just pop those questions into the comments bar on the right, and I'll be happy to answer them. If not now, then love to follow up later. All right. So to get started, I just like to talk you through how CDL Creative Destruction Lab came to be. Um, so we were actually founded back in 2012 um, at the University of Toronto, and it was born out of this observation that a lot of the very cool technology, innovations, and discovery coming out of the University of Toronto wasn't being commercialized. And so our founder, Ajay Agrawal at the time, uh, kind of questioned why was that? And so it sort of looked to areas like Silicon Valley where innovation was uh, was so uh, prominent as to you know what was going right there uh, that the University of Toronto could implement. The first hypothesis was, is it capital? Is there just more money in the Bay Area to support these companies? Uh, this ultimately was uh, decided capital can get on planes, capital can flow across borders. It probably wasn't capital that was the limiting factor. The next thing that we considered um, was that the ideas, were they're just better and more ideas in the Bay Area, but this obviously wasn't it. Um, and what it ultimately came down to was access to mentorship or the ability to access high quality business judgment. Um, and just the fact that there's such a high density of entrepreneurs that can give advice um, is the reason that we, um, we believe that the Bay Area is so exceptional at commercializing some of the innovations coming out of the universities in that area. So that's why we, we built the Creative Destruction Lab or CDL. So it's a, it's a program, a mentorship program, more than it's an accelerator or an incubator. And it's for seed stage, massively scalable science-based companies. So they have to be deeply embedded in real science or deep technology. Um, and the whole program lasts about nine months, um, which sounds really overwhelming in like a very long time, but I, I'd like you to think of it more as um, really one really intense, day or event that's held every two months, um, lasting nine months long. So there's a total of these five days, we call them session days. And the whole goal of that day is to help founders uh, set objectives or essentially prioritize their to-do list. And they do this through access to business judgment. And so when I say business judgment, what I mean is uh, I see a number of different backgrounds here, but uh, from PhD students to folks in industry and, and also some startup founders, if you're a startup founder, you know that you wake up every morning and you have what I can only imagine is an insane to-do list, um, like a hundred items and the risk of picking the wrong item to work on for your company, it, it costs money, it costs time, and it can affect the trajectory of your business. The ability to discern and prioritize those to-do list items is essentially uh, what we call business judgment. So we bring in folks or, or mentors who have built businesses before or invested in businesses um, similar to yours that have a proven track record of scaling technologies and we have them help you prioritize your to-do list essentially. I think it's easiest to describe a session day uh, or to describe our program by walking you through a standard session day. Uh, a session day starts with small group meetings. So um, pictured on the right here is a founder in a, in a small conference room with a couple of the mentors and they're discussing some aspects of the business. Um, the idea being that a founder meets with a couple of mentors at a time for about 15 to 20 minutes and then rotates through these rooms. Obviously in recent times, this has transitioned from physically meeting in a conference room to meeting in Zoom rooms, but the premise is the same, that a founder would have a pretty candid conversation about some of the challenges that they're facing and what they think they should prioritize in the next uh, two month cycle before the next session. And the goal is to really help these founders prioritize what they're working with, uh, what they're going to work on for the next two months. The problem being that everyone's built a business differently. All of these entrepreneurs and investors have seen different ways to go about it. So as a founder, if you're cycling through these Zoom rooms or conference rooms, collecting a bunch of advice, sometimes that advice can be conflicting. 
Um, so that's why in the afternoon, what we do is we transition to a larger room discussion. Um, at this point, we actually have a moderator who's now convened all of the mentors and all of the founders from all the different small group meetings. And we talk about each company at a time, and we, we hope to reconcile some of that advice that was shared in the morning. So a moderator might go, you know, mentor X, Sally, you think that this company needs to file a patent in the next two months. Mentor Y, Sandra, you seem to disagree. Why is that? Sandra might say, from my experience, it's not worth dumping all the money into a patent without verifying if anyone even wants to use the technology. So in my mind, their priority should be to talk to 50 customers in the next two months and then consider filing the patent. And so we get this peer review of their advice and the, the aim of that uh, kind of 10, 15 minutes that they were discussing the company is to really whittle it down to what kind of three things, almost at the expense of all else, should the company focus on that will lead to the greatest success of your startup um, in the next two months and, and ultimately for the, for, the re for the rest of its duration. And it's also an aim that these goals are measurable um, that we can kind of walk back into a session two months from then and say, yep, this founder completed that goal, that they need to be achievable within the two months. And that's a, an exceptionally hard thing to do if you think about um, Elon Musk sending things to space. Um, breaking, he had to break everything down into two months or, or smaller chunks, achievable milestones. And that's actually quite a skill that um, our mentors possess and they help pass on to our founders as they develop technology roadmaps. And most importantly, these goals have to align with the founder's goals. And so what you can see here on the, the bottom right is these are two founders standing in a large auditorium. The room is full of mentors and our moderators. And this is where this open format discussion, um, challenging all the mentors' advice and really whittling it down to, to three objectives would occur. And again, this now happens in a, in a Zoom room for the time being. Unique experience uh, and we think pretty special. The next thing is the opportunity for organic investment. So a lot of investors in the room, and I'll talk to you through a bit, a bit more about them specifically, but the idea is that they get a chance to invest in, in a movie and not a snapshot. And what I mean by this is they get to see the track record of founders, they get to see how you operate, they get to see how founders take um, advice and mentorship. And so uh, there's this opportunity of for organic investment from um, some of the mentors that participate. And finally, um, triaging. So we concentrate the resource of time, arguably one of the most important resources of both our founders and our mentors by um, at the end of the day, we have a deliberations period. So if you're accepted into the cohort, it's a competitive program to get accepted into and a competitive program to continue to participate in. What I mean by this is that at the end of every session, we have a deliberations portion. And at this point, um, the mentors actually discuss each company at a time. And if a mentor believes in what a founder is doing so much, they will raise their hand to work with that founder between sessions and mentor them for about four hours between sessions. Um, you need at least one mentor's hand of support to be invited back to the subsequent session. And unfortunately, if um, none of the mentors feel that they can help you, you aren't invited back. And this is, of course, no reflection of your company, but it's just more of a reflection of whether the mentors are able to add value at that point in time. And what this does is this concentrates um, the time of the mentors with the remaining founders. We usually cut a company or two per session. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to note that it is a very competitive program to participate in. Uh, I mentioned that we were just started at the University of Toronto, but um, we've now grown enormously. We have nine sites across the world, um, including two in Europe, and we offer different programs of focus at each site. So for example, Toronto, the site that I operate out of, we offer streams of focus. So I'll use the word streams in Prime, which is our general tech stream, AI, blockchain, health, matter, space, and quantum, which I hope to talk more about today. Overall, just some brief numbers. Um, the value of the companies that have gone through our program totals $7.5 billion. Um, this is across all nine sites. And this year alone, we're working with over 500 companies across all of those sites and streams. So focusing from everything from agriculture startups and streams focused around the challenges that agriculture startups face um, to our space stream. If you have questions about any of these other streams, also, please let us know. We're happy to answer about that as well. But what I really want to focus on today 
is our quantum stream. And we offer that exclusively at CDL Toronto. Um, so this was founded, this was started in 2017. And at the time it was the world's first um, startup program focused on quantum. We've since helped 80 ventures in, in the quantum ecosystem. And when we started, it was pretty exclusively working with companies working in software, but we've since developed the scope a bit to also be working on hardware. Um, and then I'll also note that the companies that have participated in our program have raised over $100 million since 2017. Uh, when we design a new stream, we try to be very deliberate about it. And then we think about the challenges that that group of company faces so that we can help address those challenges. So we, when we went through this exercise with quantum startups in 2017, what we identified as the main challenges for these companies were, were three things. And I'll go into them in a little detail and, and how we actually address them. The first thing is limited access to quantum infrastructure. The second is lack of access to industry experts. And then the third challenge or barrier to quantum startups is limited exposure to quantum expertise. So to address the first thing, um, we've actually uh, paired up with a number of tech partners. Um, we work with D-Wave, Rigetti, IBM Q, Xanadu, and Zapata to offer almost limited access to both hardware and software. The idea being not everyone has a quantum computer in their house. And if they do have access to a quantum computer, it's often costly. So we try to eliminate this barrier by providing free access to these things. The next thing is access to industry experts. Um, there's you know, a handful of people who have built successful companies um, in quantum. And, and we have those folks in the room who are there to provide mentorship to our founders. Um, this includes um, founder and CEO of OneCubit, Andrew Firstman, CEO of Zapata Computing, Chris Savoy, um, as well as folks from, from D-Wave. We also have industry experts outside of quantum, but who understand the power of quantum to affect that industry. And I'll highlight Michael Hellander, who's doing materials discovery for OLED as a mentor, um, Marty Reed in environment and social governance, ESG, and um, Xiaoming Xin, who uh, is an investor for Lockheed Martin also interested in the quantum space. Other investors include Christoph Jerzyk, a managing partner at Quantum Nation, and all the folks listed here who are there to provide um, mentorship to our quantum startups specifically. And then that final barrier is training with um, in quantum expertise. And so we have, we believe some of the world leaders in, in um, quantum expertise, Roger Malko, Barry Sanders, Michaela Mosca, Artur Ismailov and Joyce Poon providing some more of the technical guidance and training throughout the program. They help weigh in on um, technology roadmaps and helping map out important technology milestones as you build your quantum startup. Uh, and then another thing I'll mention, because if you're in this room and you're a graduate student or you're a postdoc and you haven't started a company, but you're an individual that's interested in entrepreneurship, is that um, the quantum stream is unique in that we don't just accept preformed companies. In addition to accepting preformed companies, we also welcome individual founders to apply. Um, because this is such a young area, uh, we ran a quantum boot camp that's pretty unique to the quantum stream. This is a four week long um, full time program that we offer. It's, it's free of charge. Um, all that we ask is your, your time and commitment. And it's where we invite both founding both founded companies and individuals to take part in technical training on some of the hardware and software of our technology partners, business education, because we operate out of a business school, there's an opportunity to learn about value propositions, marketing, et cetera, from um, some top uh, professors. We offer a quantum hackathon um, that's applied across all of our technology partners platforms and also the opportunity for team formation. And this is something we're almost most excited about is if you come and participate as an individual, there's a chance you find your co-founder. Perhaps you're a quantum expert, and but you don't have domain expertise in finance, but a finance expert is in the room also attending the quantum hackathon. Um, we try to provide opportunities to work together and to um, form teams. And then that team can then apply to the, the core program, which I spoke about at length at the beginning of the presentation. And just to note that we are anticipating for this to be held virtually again. Um, traditionally, this was held in Toronto in person, and we would even put people up in Toronto for the time for the four weeks of the course. Um, but this will be held virtually uh, due to COVID this coming summer. Um, it's so it's a four week, a fairly intense boot camp. But as you can see, a lot of really incredible team formation and you know participation in the hackathon. Um, 
and I'll just quickly note some some alumni that have participated. In our first year, we had companies like Protein Cured, Computational Design for Drug Discovery, OTI Lumionics, um, Materials Discovery for OLEDs, and Solid State AI, which was all about um, reducing the cost and increasing the yield of complex manufacturing industries. You can see that these companies have raised um, a variety of uh, different amounts um, since their participation in the program. In year two, we saw companies like Bait um, about optimizing processes for robotized ware warehouses and e-commerce spaces, um, as well as Agnostic and Menton AI, who raised, recently raised four million from Coastal Ventures for producing custom enzymes by reverse engineering um, of desired chemical reactions. And then just this past year is when we broaden the scope to be working on um, more hardware, to be inviting more founders that are developing things like sensors. In the case of SB Quantum, they were building nitrogen vacancy diamond-based magnetometers. We also have companies like Multiverse Computing, um, which were applying uh, quantum-inspired software to uh, the finance industry. We also had a company, Orca Computing, that was actually building a scalable and flexible quantum computer using um, optical fiber technology. And then that brings us to this year. We're currently in our fourth cohort. We're seeing, again, a lot more uh, hardware. We're seeing a lot more preformed companies, which I think speaks to the, the maturing of this industry and also a lot in the area of cryptography. And with that, I will leave it with a bit of a timeline. Um, I'll let you know that we are accepting applications, whether you're an individual who's interested in starting a business, but you don't have you know, quite that perfect idea yet, or you're a founder that's working on a quantum startup, um, we welcome your applications. They're, they're open right now. We have a, a deadline uh, for wave one ending in just this week um, on March 14th. Um, you can apply online. If you look at the creativedestructionlab.com and the quantum stream more specifically, this quantum boot camp will be running for about four weeks, usually starting the beginning of July and ending the beginning of August. And again, we invite absolutely anyone who's interested at least to have a chat. Um, you can get in contact with our team at this bit.ly link below. So bit.ly slash CDL dash interest. And this will bring you to a form. And what you can do is fill it out and we'll make sure that one of someone from our team who's best suited to answer your questions will be in contact with you. So with that, there's just three minutes left. Um, and I'm just going to answer some of the questions. Yes, our, our program was founded by Peter Vidic. Um, we miss him very much. Um, and I see some really cool ideas in there. And lots of people saying hi to each other. So I get the sense that this is a pretty tight community. Um, I see that Lucy Lau is working in an ag tech startup from the University of Waterloo and provided a limp, link. Um, I'll encourage you to get in contact with our team. I'm, I get creativedestructionlab.com will be able to answer um, any questions and I'm sure they'd love to hear about your company. And all right, if there's anything else, um, please get in contact with our team and we really look forward to, to hearing about what you're building or what you're interested in building.